Welcome to Whiskey Vault. We've got another rep. This is the actual one of the distillers again. Okay. You want to try your joke? See if it's better this time. Well, I, no, it was it was gold. Yeah. That was solid gold. It's one of the distillers. Pure Trying solid. Setting you up. Gold. This was one of the distillers. No, the again, you just. His name is Vincent Messina. You don't want to do it. You want me to do it? You don't tell me what to do. All right. You want to start mixing all these together <laughs> so that we can at the end of the year. what it likes at the end of the year. Anybody that wants us to do a blend again and <laughs> let us know in the comments, and Daniel will definitely do it. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Distiller sent this. Uh, I'm just going to spawn all those with new number who this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, they have a vested interest in yeah, getting yeah. awareness out there, but we don't know them. And uh, all right, we'll go through it and see what we think. So Western Suns, you may have seen them on the shelf. Texas bourbon whiskey. They, they are famous for their vodka. Okay. Western Suns vodka. How do you get famous for vodka? Well, I mean, in Texas, they're everywhere. They got a well, like, got like a, you know, a couple dozen flavors of vodka. Okay. And you can just see Western, you can see this. That Western Sun logo, like in vodka of all different flavors and colors, you see it a lot. Okay. I, I, Bars I don't. And, you do. Yeah. Well, you don't really go out. Yeah. No, I don't. Know. Anyway, this is north of Dallas in Pilot Point. Yeah. This is their bourbon. Mm -hmm. And they made this. Mm. And they didn't source it. 68% um, Texas Midwestern corn, 22% mm -hmm. Canadian rye, 10% two row malted barley, just okay. standard barley. Yeah. Um, 600 gallon copper pot still. Okay. Right. And then uh, just normal American Char 3. I gotta, I gotta tell you, uh, the fact that they're vodka people, it's like, oh, a little bit wary, but the fact mm -hmm. that you stir down the copper pot still. And kind of excited. No, 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 classic bourbon. I don't know if they also run it through their column. They have a 20 foot column. Okay. All so right. I don't know if they run it through that or if they disengage some plates and run it through a couple. Or... Yeah. Yeah. But the, the reason why we like pot stills is because it's gonna give you. Right. A lot more heft and saturation of body to a lot of Ooh. flavors. Yeah. I can imagine that that would be pot still. Oh. That is dense. That's nice. Ooh. There is a thing no, in I there, like, though. I, no, I like the thing. I'm telling you, the thing that's in there, I like that thing. It's a sour candy. It is. You ever had crispy walnuts or pecans at, mm -hmm. an, Asian, at that, an Asian restaurant? Yeah. It's got like this almost salty, savory... Yep. Caramelized coating on the, the nuttiness. It's umami and sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I could also say green app, uh, sour apple mixed with cherries. Yeah, but also, yes. But there is like this thick, dark heftiness underneath that that mm -hmm. keeps it from getting too bright and shiny and brittle and high. It's sharp, though. There's yeah, a what's, sharpness what's, what's to the that. Proof? Single barrel, it's hot. Okay. Uh, but no, they proved it down. It is a single barrel, but they proved it to 90. Oh, I would. It smells hot. I would have guessed uh, like fifty-five percent. Easy. Yeah. I might have been convinced it was high fifties. If this is forty-five percent, I would have guessed fifty-five percent. This, but there it is a lot of ethanol coming out on the nose there. But the flavors are keeping right up with it. It's not just getting blown away by the alcohol content. <sighs> and then there's like a grape skin, grape skin quality too. Oh, the grape comes through in the palate. Grape nuts. Ooh, a yeah. waxy walnut and yeah. like grape nut and like this grape skin. Yeah, and then it finishes with a little bit of that tannin layer. I wonder that tannin and like a cinnamon nutmeg. What they did in the still right before they ran this. Oh, you think they ran some? I don't know. No one's gonna do vodka in a pot. Well, vodka still. wouldn't affect it because well, it's you're not just gonna a do, neutral spirit. You're not gonna do vodka in a pot still though. Yeah, they start the vodka in their pot still. Really? Is yeah. that why it's a big deal? And then they run it through a twenty plate, twenty foot column. Okay. With like thirteen plates. But. I don't know. I'd be curious about that. I don't know tons about vodka, but my read on vodka is you're just trying to get as much of that flavor and as much clean, clean, clean spirit as yeah, possible. Yeah, so it shouldn't affect the next run. But why even start with a pot stool at all? Like, is there a body that can stay clean? I don't know. That's a different thing. I can't acclimate to that great you, nut. You know what it is? Nutty note. Do you ever have like just pie crust? You're not even getting into like the, say like a pecan pie yet. You're not even getting into the pecan pie yet. But just, just the, the crust. dried crust, yeah. Yeah, the crust. Yeah, that gin, uh, um, not ginger, graham. Mm -hmm. Graham cracker and mm -hmm. walnut. Yeah. I like most everything going on in here. I don't like the 
finish because it lands a little tanniny for me. But leading all the way up to that's nice. I don't know. what well, This is a 30-gallon barrel, by the way. Okay. I don't know what that could be compared to. Hmm. It's so tannin heavy. Well, towards the end. Yeah, but I mean, that, that grape and that wax walnut and that it's, yeah. ginger or graham cracker it's, then uh, finishes and all that wood tannin. You ever had like a honey almond croissant type of pastry? Yeah. And then that's the, that's the territory we're in. We're kind of like in a pecan pie. Like yeah, the, pastry for graham cracker. dessert pastry. Yeah. What would be easily accessible that comes anywhere close to this? Mm. Here's the thing. Don't fixate on it being very similar. Just something that could be considered a peer. Same category. Yeah, that's what I'm... But like a Texas whiskey, a bourbon. Yeah, I'm thinking accessible, but anything that has all of those flavors as a peer no, no, is no. also not accessible. Not a peer in terms of those flavors, a peer in terms of just categorization. So it doesn't matter if they are completely opposite, taste nothing alike. They have no overlap. I mean, yes, fine. <laughs> yes, fine, because it's the A, B that you're looking for. What does this yeah. have that this does not have? Well, what then it doesn't have? matter. I could pull literally anything from my the right categorization, hand. like a Texas whiskey, a Texas yeah, bourbon. Yeah, but I'm thinking... Just a Texas bourbon. Texas get bourbon's still not Austin, accessible. Get a still Austin bourbon. Ah, that's you just dick. night and day. You dick. This is not complicated. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, my uh, God. We don't have the still Austins. They're upstairs. Oh, my God, no. uh, Eric Woodard, honestly, if I could tell my college-aged self that I would consider Jack Daniels smooth compared to whiskeys I've had in 2022, I would think that I've turned into a masochist. And honestly, and honestly, in a lot of ways I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So pretty much any whiskey that's gonna be your starting out whiskey, even like a Crown Royal or a Bullet, in those early days, if you're used to beer or wine or something, it's like, man, it feels like a giant mountain of alcohol that is just exploding in your mouth. But uh, once you start getting to like the higher proof stuff, the more complicated, weird, interesting, exotic whiskeys, and those quickly become very simple and often, especially after you get in a cask, and often kind of watery. But yeah, I feel you, man. What'd you pour? Uh, George Dickel bottled in bond. That Texas whiskey George Now, Dickel. there's no Texas whiskey that anyone outside of Texas is going to be able to easily get. Not a bourbon. I mean, even Garrison is almost impossible. TX bourbon. Ooh. So, Their distribution is lower. A lot more peanut dust on the George Dick. Yeah, so I'm looking for that. There's a slight sour note to this chalk candy that Dickel always has that makes me think of this a little bit. And it is. There's an overlap. And this sort of dusty candy chocolatey mm -hmm. note. So very caramelized toasted sugar quality baking spices, pastry stuff going on in the Western sun. And then the George Dickel, yeah, it's more of a bright peanut. And then you taste it, and you'll find that's where you find that chalk candy. Oh, candy hearts. Oh my gosh, chalky that sugar, yeah. chalky sugar candy. Yeah, it was uh, one of the um, the poppies. Mm -hmm. William Poppy. So Will or Sarah, I can't remember which one of them, I think it's Will, yeah. uh, said that was his marker for Dickel and he could spot it anywhere. Oh, yeah. And after he said it out loud, I've never been able to get, I can get a, I can get Dickel on a blind test on every lineup mm -hmm. we've done now This is because of that chalky candy. Chalky candy. This is much more of like the sugar has turned into like a syrupy, desserty kind of quality. But they both have that slight tangy sour note towards the tail end Again, for me. The sour, the sour is one of the words that I think is a little bit too pointed with what people hear when they hear the word sour. Tangy, mm. wangy even? You wanted to go wangy? No. Throw down some wangy. Now it is to me, sour? it does touch sour candies. Cause that's where it hits me on my jaw and my tongue. The same place that a sour candy does. See, I could be convinced that the tannin finish on this is close to like a bitter. Yeah, I'm getting that too. But I'm this is different. Sour. I'm not getting the sour. All right. I pro sopon. I don't want to ever get this level of whiskey appreciation, get to this level of whiskey appreciation. I want to stupidly sit there and say to my Johnny Walker Black or Lafroig tin, hmm, this is good. <laughs> yeah. I like. And have my thoughts drift off to something other than whiskey as opposed to these two who are hyper analyzing the hooch. This is the very definition of. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of the channel, though. No, but that's real, though. That's I kind gotta of the say, I, yeah. 
it it does sometimes. Like I feel this way as a musician. Yeah. There's sometimes that I, depending on the music style, I lose the ability to just appreciate it and listen to it like a normal person. Yeah. And I immediately am going like, mm, I would have turned that snare down, or mm, the bass coming in there yeah. should have been postponed by three measures, or ah, that was a wrong choice. See, I I get a bit <clears> of that <throat> with um, movies and TV shows, mm -hmm. and it's rarely within the context of well, what would I have done differently? Right. And more within the context of oh, I see what you did there. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, you borrowed that shot for this moment because there's no way that person had that reaction to that, and right, it's a whole thing. Uh, but whenever a movie is done like beautifully, I it's think the most, oh, I think most recently the movie that kind of uh, it was a little bit too slow for some people. Dune, the new I haven't Dune. Got to see it yet. Oh my gosh, it was so good. Yeah, it was one of those things where you very quickly forget about because it would make me sad <laughs> to think, well, how did they pull that off? Oh shit! I will never in a million years be able to do any of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but sometimes my point is, sometimes a whiskey reaches that level. Yeah. Where even though you know we've gone through you know like a thousand, two thousand whiskeys, and we make whiskey, we we are around it constantly. But every once in a while, you try something, and you just got to sit down and shut the fuck up because mm -hmm. it's yeah. great. Absolutely. Uh, neither one of these are that good. Here's to find stupid. Yeah. No, they're fine. Yeah, uh, it's just not my preference. It's too much of that tannin. Too much of that wax and that. Yeah, zing. I would say uh, between the two, I like this one better. I do actually like it better than the George Dickel. Yeah, I think both are good whiskeys though. Yeah. Here's the fighting, stealing a drink. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal your liver. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. <laughs>